turned in by a roommate. Police arrest three men in connection to a deadly shooting on the main line because one man noticed something in his apartment wasn't right. COVID cases climbing, the Delta variant spreading through unvaccinated communities, and if days of decline, infections are once again starting to spike. Hot and humid. Feels like temperatures are going to top out around 100 degrees today with the chance of another summer heat wave coming this week. NBC 10 News starts now. Oh boy, get ready for that. Good morning. <laughs> You're watching NBC 10 News today. I'm Aaron Coleman. Good morning, Aaron. I'm Keith Jones. Let's turn our attention to NBC 10 First Alert Meteorologist Bill Hendley with your First Alert Forecast. Morning, Bill. Good morning, Keith. We are off to a steamy start. You can feel it in the atmosphere yeah. this morning. The temperatures really haven't cooled down all that much. We're in the 70s right now. A live view of Boathouse Row. Get ready for a hot and humid day. There are some clouds around right now. The temperature holding at 77 in Philadelphia. Look at that dew point. That is soaking. 75 steamy conditions with barely a breeze. It's at three miles an hour. We do have some clouds around. I've been tracking a few showers. The round of showers has just left the Lehigh Valley, but there are some storms to the northwest. So we're not done with the showers and thunderstorms for today. But we'll get some sunshine before any storms pop up. And look at these temperatures. That's upper 80s. That's at 1 o'clock this afternoon. And it's going to feel like 98, 10 degrees above the actual temperature. That's just Philadelphia, and you'll feel the steaminess across the board. Those scattered showers and thunderstorms this afternoon with temperatures in the 80s in low 90s. We're back in just a few minutes. I'll break it down hour by hour for the Lehigh Valley and Delaware. Keith, Aaron. Thank you, Bill. NBC 10, meanwhile, following breaking news. Just in the last hour, police say... They arrested three people in connection to a beating and a kidnapping. The victim, just 17 years old. Let's get right to NBC 10's Miguel Martinez Valle. He's live at the scene right now, Oxford Circle. Miguel, uh, what do you see? What's going on? Hey, good morning. Yeah, the victim tells police that he was abducted and then tortured in a home here in Oxford Circle down the street. Now, there is one police, at least, that we see down the street uh, a little bit farther. But police say that the victim went missing last night at around 1130. That was when it was first reported by his parents. Police then used his phone to track him to a home here in Oxford Circle. He told police that he was trapped, being held at gunpoint and police and SWAT surrounded the home say eventually the victim and then others came outside they tell us they have three people in custody two women and a man but we do not know the motive for this kidnapping for this abduction uh, we're still waiting on more information as for right now according to police the victims uh, was beaten up pretty good as he was being tortured overnight I'll send it back to you guys at Miguel Martinez by NBC 10 News Mm, all right, Miguel, thank you. Two men are now charged in the murder of a man in front of an Ardmore Community Center on Saturday. The Montgomery County District Attorney and Lower Marion Police Chief says Micah Colbert and Elijah Smith plan to buy a ghost gun from the 19-year-old victim. According to investigators, the men shot and killed Evans while he was in the driver's seat of his car and robbed him of that ghost gun. A third man went to police and told them his roommate, Colbert, took his gun and used it to kill Evans. That man was arrested on weapons charges. Yeah, the gun violence crisis shows no signs of backing down in Philadelphia. Take a look at the numbers from just this weekend. 30 people were shot in the city since Friday. Three of those people died. One deadly shooting was in a neighborhood you just don't expect. The streets of Maniunk. Someone shot a man almost a dozen times near Leverington and Baker Streets. The guy died at the hospital and his killer is still out there. And after the weekend, Philly now has nearly 300 homicides. That puts us on track to be one of the deadliest years in this city's history. And a pair of organizations hope that nurturing Philadelphia with nature will help communities heal from gun violence. That's why people were out yesterday at the Ruth Street Garden in Kensington. They cleaned up the grounds. They put new plants all around. Several of the volunteers were people whose lives were broken by gun violence. Organizers hope planting new life will help them heal. It happens in the suburbs, it happens in Delco, it just happens everywhere. And um, unfortunately, people wait until it happens to them to become one of action when people should really do be proactive before it actually happens to them. The garden can be used to start the healing process, or you can come to help others heal. Police say they captured the man who hit a bicyclist in Rehoboth Beach with a Jeep this weekend and then took off. Investigators believe he was drunk and has a suspended license on top of that. Witnesses say Derek White of Millsboro veered off the road, hit the biker near Henlopen Square, 
the force threw her right into the entrance right now. She's in the hospital with some pretty serious injuries. Meantime, President Biden's going to be coming to Philadelphia tomorrow to speak about protecting voter rights. It comes as Republicans nationwide have placed more restrictions on voting following former President Trump's false claims of voter fraud in the 2020 election. It is not yet clear where the president is speaking. So be sure to stay with NBC10 on air and online for updates. Vice President Kamala Harris is going to be out today pushing everybody to get vaccinated. She's going to be stopping in Detroit as part of her We Can Do This tour and talking to residents about getting their dose. It comes on the heels of the nation missing President Biden's goal of 70 percent of adults vaccinated by July 4th. It is 4-3 right now. Concerning news on the pandemic front this morning, coronavirus cases, they're now climbing in more than two dozen states because of the Delta variant. Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, they are not on that list. But to put that into perspective, on Monday of last week, there were about 11,000 new cases nationwide. And by Friday, it was up by nearly 27,000 new cases. This comes as Pfizer plans to talk with top U.S. health officials today about a booster shot to combat the Delta variant. NBC 10's Lucy Bustamante joins us live in the newsroom. Lucy, there's a debate on if and when a third dose could be needed. That is exactly right, Keith, and that is why Pfizer will be meeting with the Food and Drug Administration and other officials today. So Pfizer has said that booster shots would likely be needed within 12 months, and they say their research suggests a third dose can offer more protection against the highly contagious Delta variant. But the FDA and the CDC have studies that show the current Pfizer vaccine is still protecting people from that variant. Dr. Anthony Fauci says it's just too soon to tell if Americans will need a third dose. It doesn't mean that we're not very, very actively following and gathering all of this information to see if and when we might need it. And if and when we do, we'll have everything in place to do it. So Fauci went on to say that getting the vaccine that is available right now is the best option. Currently, only 48 percent of the U.S. population is fully vaccinated. And then Israel announced yesterday that they will be offering Pfizer's third dose to adults with weak immune systems, but not to the general public. But it's still not clear, guys, when the U.S. could make a decision here. In the newsroom, Lucy Bustamante, NBC10 News. Aaron. Mm -hmm. All right, Lucy, thank you for that. 405 right now. The recovery effort at the condo collapse in Surfside could soon be coming to an end. It comes after crews were able to haul away more concrete and debris from this site this weekend. The death toll now stands at 90, with 31 people still unaccounted for. Officials say the recovery effort could wrap up within the next week or two. They say they are working so delicately now that they have even found unbroken wine bottles in the rubble and personal possessions as small as rings. Our team continues to make incredible progress delayering the pile. And we're working to bring closure to families as quickly as we possibly can. Police are also working with the families of victims to note what items of significance or sentimental value might be in the rubble. A heads up for families with children this week, the Biden administration's new monthly child tax credits are going to start rolling out. The first payment, July 15th, families are going to get monthly payments of up to $300 per child under six and $250 for each child six to 18 years old as part of the president's COVID relief plan. All right, 406 right now, and the Phillies are going into the All-Star break with a series win over the Red Sox, the team with the best record in the American League. They pulled it off yesterday, too, with a star pitcher out of the lineup. Aaron Nola, one of four guys on the COVID-related injury list. He's out along with two relievers because of the contact tracing program they have. Alex Bohm tested positive for COVID-19, so he'll be out at least 10 days. Right now, the fills are 500 after the first half of the season. This is a resilient group, and we've probably had as many tough losses as any team in baseball, and we have found a way. You know, the last 10 days, we've played extremely well. We beat some good teams, um, taken some series from good teams. We had a winning road trip. Extremely proud. And the Phillies are even right now, as we mentioned, 44 and 44. They're just three and a half games behind the Mets for the top spot in the National League East. Registration is open for a Jersey Shore tradition that's more than 100 years old. The annual baby parade is next month, and families with children age 10 and younger 
are invited to participate. You can register over on Ocean City's website. The parade is August 12th. <laughs> so cute. I'm NBC10 First Alert Meteorologist Bill Henley. Well, we're off to a steamy start. You can feel the moisture in the atmosphere. Live view from the Lehigh Valley, which is drying out after a few showers overnight. 70 degrees right now. Humidity's up there at 93%. Not much of a breeze this morning. There go the showers just pulling away from Northampton County. You can see them moving off to the northeast. It'll be dry for most of the morning, but there's a good chance we'll see showers and thunderstorms develop this afternoon. Steamy, yes, that steaminess will be with us right at noontime, 83 degrees, and here comes the chance of some scattered showers this afternoon. Those 80s don't look too bad, but the humidity is so high, it's going to feel like it's 10 degrees hotter than the actual temperature. 94 degrees, and that's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and climbing. Dry start in Delaware, Wilmington, 77, steamy, the dew point 74. That's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, and the wind is out of the south-southwest at 9 miles an hour. That direction tends to warm us up and bring in the humidity this time of year, and it's not going to fail to do so today. Look at the numbers. By 10 o'clock, 83 degrees. At lunchtime, 86, and then almost up to 90 by 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it will reach into the 90s today, but that 89 degrees is going to feel like 99 degrees at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, so do your best to stay cool. Find some shade. Stay out of the sun today, and again tomorrow, another steamy one, 91. Very high humidity again tomorrow and on Wednesday with some possibility of some isolated showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon. Meantime, in the Lehigh Valley, temperatures in the 80s, and you can count on afternoon showers and thunderstorms right on through Wednesday afternoon. There are some changes ahead toward the weekend. I'll have those with the 10 day on 10 when I come back in a few minutes. But right now, 10 past 4, time to check in with Sheila Watko for First Alert Traffic. Thank you, Bill. Good morning. Happy Monday. Right now, the roads are already off to a somewhat busy start. Things are mostly looking good across the area, but let's take a look at the southbound Blue Route. We don't usually have construction out here so early. A little bit past Villanova, you're going to find that the right lane is blocked with construction. You can see some of those vehicles out there. For the most part, though, we're still quiet on 476, and traffic's able to get by without an issue. Also, great news this morning in the westbound Schuylkill between South Street and the Vine. All lanes are open. No road work out there that's going to slow you down. Both lanes are looking nice and clear, and the rest of our map for the most part is looking good, but we've got a little bit of construction on the turnpike and also in Delco this morning. Only one lane is getting by heading northbound, so we'll take a closer look at that in just a few minutes and see how that's overall affecting us. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Sheila. All right, still ahead, beaches closed. Some Jersey Shore communities are dealing with hundreds of needles litter in the water and the sand. Where officials think they're coming from and the warning to families just trying to enjoy their vacation in the heart of summer. Plus, discovered by the maid, an alarming find a cleaning woman made inside a Denver hotel room, just steps away from the stadium hosting the MLB All-Star Game this week that landed four people behind bars. Let's give you a live look outside right now. 11 minutes after 4 o'clock and Boathouse Row lit up in green this morning. 77 degrees on your Monday. 